Kyle Platt here with Max Borders, executive editor of The Freeman. Max, uh, thanks so much for being on. Hey, I appreciate it. We've run, in, we've run into each other a couple times, uh, mostly uh, down in your home state of Texas for a couple of really cool SFL events. Uh, but this is the first time I've gotten to speak with you at length because you're always so busy. <laughs> you do my best. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You've got, um, oh yeah, and we were at Freedom Fest last year too. Yeah. But down to brass tacks, uh, you have a new Liberty Guide coming out on Liberty Me. It is a voice and exit manifesto. And uh, some people might not know what voice and exit is, but it's kind of your baby. Uh, let me know. First of all, let's get a, a quick overview of what voice and exit is. Sure. Well, let me let me just uh, give you some background on the concept because, uh, you know, apparently the title might suggest shameless self-promotion, and it certainly it is. <laughs> because we have an event here in Austin, Texas. In fact, it's June 21st. Um, we're, and I, we want to invite people to come, obviously. And we, we, but really, Voice and Exit is also about building an ethos and a culture, and that's what I want to talk about. We got the name from from this essay that was written in the '70s called "Exit Voice and Loyalty," and the idea is that um, the, the idea behind this sort of this human algorithm, I guess you could call it, is that people, when they're in certain kinds of situations, whatever the status quo is that they can speak up about change. If you don't like something, say, in your community group or your church or whatever, you can speak up about it. And if the folks in your group aren't willing to make change and you're not you know, able to exercise voice effectively to make change internally to that system, then you want, in as much as possible, to have a right of exit. And that means starting something new. It generally doesn't mean just leaving something. It also means creating something different. We actually think in some deep and profound sense this is the human algorithm. Uh, maybe even as much as you know, thinking about people in peaceful ways or using some sort of non-harm principle or, or as, the, uh, as the purists like to say, a non-aggression axiom. Um, but in any case, the idea is um, that reducing the cost of exit for any given system or any status quo is the best way to achieve sort of social harmony and equilibrium. And, and, and we are very much about celebrating that. It's a very cool um, philosophy, but you've turned it into a sort of a TED style conference, which is really, really exciting. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, basically um, we want to, we want to, create an ethos. So what better way to create an ethos than to start a, a, a for-profit entity that uh, invites people to come and partake of philosophy? You know, they say, you know, what do philosophers do when they grow up? Well, they start TED-style conferences that seem really abstract and people have a difficult time figuring out why the hell they're coming. <laughs> well, that's that's not entirely true. It's um, We've had a lot of really good uh, resonance from people out there. You know, they're People are starved for something like sure. this, and and you know the the sort of the squishy um, you know sort of marketing that we do is is about human flourishing. We think that you know people want to improve themselves. They want to have engage in personal development, but they also want to change their community and their world. It starts with you, of course, and if you look at it as if it were concentric circles moving out. Or maybe like sphere, concentric spheres forming an onion skin. You start with improving yourself, your body, your mind, your spirit. Uh, spirit can be metaphorical or actual depending on your belief set. doesn't matter to us, but it's really about getting your crap together, optimizing your performance, and having personal growth. And then from, from, uh, from there, building on improvements to your community, um, and that could be your virtual community. I mean, everybody in the Lib Liberty Me space is involved in a virtual community. And that's that in this day and age, this age of connectedness is just as important as, you know, walking next door to um, to your neighbors to help them out or to borrow a cup of sugar or to create a homeowners association or whatever you want to do. So um, this building out from the core of you know, a personal development to global de global development is is kind of the overall modus operandi, and we think people are going to be excited about this. 
particularly as everybody wants to improve him or herself. Uh, where is it this year? It's it's in Austin, Texas okay. on June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Uh, we have breakout sessions also at Ballet Austin next door. It's going to be um, a great event. It's divided into three parts, and yes, it's a heck of a deal. If anybody tells you otherwise, they're crazy. Ted can uh, charge exorbitant prices for their offerings because they have a, a, a mega brand, and kudos to them for that. But we're gunning for them, and uh, we think uh, we think we bring a little something a little bit more radical to the table here than than Ted does. But in any case. The, the, the event is, is divided into three portions, and this is really where the value comes out. Um, the first part is the, the seeds talks. That's the, the, the sort of TED-like portion where we get visionary speakers to share ideas that fall under the rubric of our ethos or our, our, our ideas. Um, and the second portion is the sp sprouts, sprouts breakout sessions. These allow you to go deeper with the ideas, do some interactive stuff, and really kind of drill down into some, maybe some of the stuff you heard in the first part. It could be seasteading, startup cities, Bitcoin, um, any, anything that you are interested in, you'll have an opportunity to go deeper. And then the third portion, that's what we internally call the BFP, the big fucking party. And if you need to bleep that after the fact, I understand. But yeah. outward facing, we call it the, uh, the Festival of Flourishing. We've got all, all kinds of beautiful acts, some really killer fun stuff for people to do. You know, not only will our exhibitors love this part, but our, our guests will as well because we've got all kinds of interesting, really art-driven art acts, uh, performance artists, and uh, headlining Govinda electronic music guys, amazing. So it's just like if, if you've got a Saturday that you wanted to give over to us, we will make you happy. Yeah, you know, Austin has a really interesting culture. It has an interesting music scene, art, etc. How does that inform the voice and exit ethos? Well, that's, that's great. You know, it, it, being in Austin is an absolutely infectious thing. I, I, I sort of, uh, I don't want to, I don't really want to, to crash on Washington, D.C. too much, but <laughs> Austin, if you come to Austin, the first thing you're likely to talk about with people is, of course, like, you know, where are you from? You know, because a lot of people are transplants and they're drawn like moths to this culture. Uh, uh, you know, moths to the flame. And, um, and the first thing you talk about with people in Austin is what are you into? What makes you happy? What, what kind of stuff are you involved in? What are you creating? That's really the Austin vibe. When you go to D.C., it's sort of like, what's your resume? Why should I be talking to you right now? And, and that, I think, is a factor of the sort of zero-sum mentality that you get in, in Washington, which is sort of like backbiting and bureaucratic and, and, and very much like pigs at the trough, and you got to nudge people to decide to get to it. I'm not saying that's entirely that way. I used to live in D.C., and I had a lot of really interesting people I knew. But on a whole, it's really like, like a resume culture. Um, who are you, and why should I be talking to you? Whereas in Austin, it's like, you know, it might be some guy with, with funny colored hair and tattoos, and he's doing some really interesting stuff, and you want to know about that, and they want to know about you. And it's, it's very much a, cultural, a culture of exchange, and, and yes, for, for many people, it's a, a, a prog culture. But if you take the best of that and not the status part of it, um, Austin is just a fantastic place. It's, it's really artistic, creative. The tech industry is big here. So it's like a mini Silicon Valley. And that Silicon Valley culture is all about creativity and uh, making the world a better place through entrepreneurship or, or uh, through social enterprise. So I love that. And it absolutely informs the voice and exit culture. And we want to like magnify it and bring it back to Austin and sort of say, you guys have this. And we want to encapsulate it and celebrate it in one day um, and, and really continue to put Austin on the map. So, sure. yeah. Sure, sure. That, I mean, that sounds amazing. I am thinking about how to get to it right now, actually, uh, <laughs> what I can do with my schedule. So back to, the, uh, back to the guide. How do you translate that kind of experience into a guide, and what can the guide, the voice and exit manifesto, teach the members of Liberty Me? Yeah, um, 
I think the primary thing that I would want people to take from the Voice and Exit Manifesto is a culture of optimism. You can look at the literature in positive psychology, and I cite a little bit of that, at least indirectly, in the manifesto. You can look at the culture of positive psychology. Posit positive psychology is, as opposed to regular psychology, was, which is the study of how we fix you when you're pathologically screwed up uh, or even congenitally screwed up. Positive psychology is sort of predicated on the question, how are we to live our lives? which is an ultimate philosophical question. And people want to be happy. Part of being happy is, um, is you know, doing certain things in your life and really engaging in that personal growth. So it's, that's that starting with you stuff I talked about earlier. But ultimately, optimism is infectious. So one thing that I can give the world, like sort of like uh, having a flame that I share with other people's wicks, is optimism. A lot of times we in, in this movement, we tend to be kind of negative. We tend to be like, freaking government. I mean, I'm that way. I'm that way a lot. You know, I'm on Facebook all the time going, this is bullshit, you know, and I'll read some article about how Uber was shut down in some city because the taxi license cartels, uh, you know, paid off the the city council and got it shut down. Right. Sometimes it's infuriating. And it's even more yeah. infuriating how people misunderstand the issue. But yeah, I, I totally get that. Yeah. But at the same time, Lyft and Uber and places like this, like Jeff and I discussed in 50 Ways to Leave Leviathan, are spreading like a fungus. So we want to share that, you know, that, that sharing economy, ideas about the sharing economy, that, that, that real inversion of the crony capitalist system we're leaving behind in, in place of this this culture of connectedness that is currently being formed that's going to get us into a post-partisan, uh, post-political world, I truly believe. And uh, we want to we want to share that optimism because ultimately when people, especially new people, look at you, they are more likely to find you interesting and compelling if you're optimistic than if you're bitching. Right. And so we really want to bring that and bring it hard. And that's you know, that's really why we're doing this. I hope I make a whole bunch of money someday with voice, voice and Exit, but I get up out of bed every day and work on this stuff because um, I, want to, I want to share this infectious optimism and, and have it glom onto these really good ideas that, that many people in the libertarian movement share with us. Awesome, awesome. Big ideas, invigorating ideas. Everybody needs to check their schedules like I'm about to and see if they can attend Voice and Exit in, uh, in Austin, Texas. And then uh, get on to liberty.me. Check out the Voice and Exit Manifesto by Max Borders and figure out how you can infuse your philosophy with that kind of optimism and uh, hopefully change the world. Uh, thanks so much for being on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Yeah, let's talk soon, either in person or on video. I look forward to it. You got a free ticket waiting on you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good one, Max. All righty. All right.